have all of our four doors off. I made the comment earlier about it's better to go ahead and cut our hinges than it is to spread them. You can see because it was a necessary evil that when I had to attack the nader pin, I made a small crease in my B-post. This is why it's better to cut the hinges. Now I'm a pretty small frame guy, and when you talk about any type of confined space rescue, which can also include auto extrication, there's not a lot of room to work in here, especially when you're trying to do proper patient packaging. So our main goal is, especially during a stable operation or a textbook rescue, is to create as much room as possible. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make a series of relief cuts in the C-post and the undercarriage. And then we're gonna hook up a chain kit and then lift the back end. You can see we made the series of relief cuts. Uh, we'll start with the C-post. Now we know that depending on the make and model, C-posts come in various sizes. And usually they start out thick and become narrow toward the roof line. So on this evolution, it really doesn't matter if you cut high or low. Now understand, when you're talking high or low, it's always in relation to the way the car is sitting to you now. So we decided to cut low because it's more narrow up here. So we maximize tool use with tool time to complete these cuts. Coming up here, we cut the rocker channel. And along with the rocker channel, we cut the frame rail that's right next to it that gives the reinforcement to the back end. This is gonna be our pivot point for the back end of the car when we go to lift it. If you notice too, on the one side, we had to cut the fuel lines. What Al did is cutting them's not a problem. To safety those fuel lines, you just bend them up. And when you cut fuel lines, it actually crimps them off. It's not a very tight crimp, but it's not gonna allow fluid just to actively leak out. So the next step, we're gonna hook up our chain kit and we're gonna prepare to lift. As you can see, we have all of our equipment in place. We have a chain that's linked to the front frame assembly. That's going to give us our pull. We have a 32 inch spreader with two hooks. Hooks should always be up because you're always able to visually see the seat of your chain. It's very important to remember. The chain itself, always keep in mind that the weld should always be on the outside never on the inside because it's the weakest part of the link. As we work back, we have two pieces of step chalk stacked on top of each other. This creates the leverage to pull up on the rear end. Now, you can still achieve this same movement without having the cribbing in place. The problem with that is you use a lot of slack of your chain in order to pull the back end up, I'm sorry, pull the back end in before popping it up. So to alleviate that, we just built it up to create that leverage. Coming back, 
we have our chain hooked in, hooks up, hooks up, all the welds are on the outside. We have the chain wrapped around the bumper cylinders and we have a safety strap in place. Now the safety strap is critical. You're not gonna achieve this movement on one throw of your spreader, even using the 32 inch spreader. It takes two. So what happens is when you, when you get that pitch and I have no slack in my chain, one throw of the spreader is gonna get me to about 20 to 30 degrees. The safety strap, you break it, you tighten it, which allows everything to stay in line. You keep the pitch, you're able to readjust your chains, and then close your spreader again. Now, the anatomy of the car actually helps us with this evolution. Our relief cuts are cut directly in front of the gas tank. That's our pivot point. So it never is going to compromise the gas tank itself during this whole evolution. So that's another critical thing to remember about those relief cuts, always in front of the gas tank. Now, you'll notice this is a front wheel drive vehicle. You can do this same evolution on a rear wheel drive vehicle as well. Always remember, when you're connecting your chains, the further back you go on the car, the more leverage you obtain. That's preferred. But not always can you wrap those bumper cylinders. So with that being said, rear wheel vehicles, you can go ahead and just wrap the axle, okay? You might have to build up your cribbing in the center just a little bit higher, which is not a problem to create more of that leverage because you're not working with as much chain. So let's get ready to lift. As you can see, we have our finished product. We have our chain still in place, our safety strap secured. We have almost a 90 degree tilt of the back end. So if we come around, we can see all the valued extra space we have to work. But this is where I like to stress. This evolution is a great fundamental builder. It you can't achieve this without doing the proper relief cuts and proper placement of your spreader. With that being said, I want to thank you for viewing this video and always remember the cardinal rule, be safe.